good morning so today we will be looking on, into the second lecture on the topic of uh, measurement statistics so to recap so we had covered in the last lecture the representation of data or a distribution of data in the form of a histogram and also the basics of the gaussian distribution and the use of a z distribution table to determine the Gaussian nature of the probability distribution. We have also seen uh, and explored the concept of standard error of mean from which we can get error estimates between the sample mean and the true mean of a particular data set. Okay. Uh, so in the while talking about Gaussian distribution uh, we've already seen that sets of n measurements when averaged out their means the mean the sample means of those sets of n measurements they themselves form a Gaussian distribution okay and we have used the Z uh, distribution table to give an to assess the error in the mean okay now it is also used useful to study the distribution of variance variances of the sets of uh, samples n samples to get a different dimension to get a different idea of how the variances are related to the variance of a infinite distribution or infinite uh, length data set okay and that study is uh, is sort of derived or is uh, done by exploring the chi square distribution okay it's a it's a modified way of analyzing the distribution of the variances okay where this parameter chi square is actually this value that is k into sigma x square by sigma square and for a particular uh, sample size or a particular uh, or a data set with a particular degree number of degrees of freedom k you plot a graph of chi square that is the probability of uh, k by sigma x square by sigma square being of a particular value okay now coming to the uh, to explain the degrees of freedom if you have any data the degrees of freedom would be of uh, of size n the degrees of freedom will be the number of ways the data can be varied while retaining one particular problem can be varied with with the particular constraints now in the case that let us say that you have a mean a set mean mu okay and you have n datas okay n data points okay so out of which you can vary n minus 1 arbitrarily but the nth data point should be chosen depending upon the rest n minus 1 so that the overall sample mean doesn't change so with that uh, basic understanding we can sort of say that in case you have a data set where you have a predetermined sample mean or you have mu taken from the data set then the number of degrees of freedom is n minus 1 and as an extension if you estimate the true mean mu and uh, the true standard deviation or the standard deviation of the infinite data set sigma that if it is determined from the data set then the degrees of freedom is n minus 2 okay so as i said here sigma x is the variance of the sample data set of samples and sigma square is the variance of an infinite population okay now these chi square 
distribution the probability distribution table or the probability distribution is plotted with respect to key here okay that is the number of degrees of freedom and it, it expects in it expresses the expected variation of the sample population variance from the variation from the variance of the infinite population okay so it, it basically gives that if the value of chi square or here yeah, the value of chi square being equal to some particular value for a particular number of sample number of degrees of freedom exactly not number of samples okay so this is the probability of this was shy okay this is the probability of chi square being equal to not even that so this is yeah this is this is the this is not the probability even okay the probability is much uh, this thing this so this is the this gives the expected variations okay the probability would be the area under the curve in this case so this is not a probability so and and it can be seen that since the variance is a positive quantity and so is the standard deviation this distribution cannot be symmetric like the gaussian distribution however this distribution this distribution tends to symmetry as k increases so as k increases this distribution tends to become more and more symmetric and centered around the true uh, and centered around k actually so as i said as the number of samples increase this distribution tends to become more symmetric and become centered around the value of k as k increases okay, and this is easy to understand because as k increases sigma x will tend to sigma and chi square will be equal to k times sigma x square or sig by sigma square this will become 1 okay and the magnitude of this variation okay is expressed in terms of a or some a, a parameter called as level of significance okay let's look into the details of this okay now what is a level of significance let us say you have a parameter uh, you have a probability alpha okay the level of significance is alpha Okay, which means that chi alpha square, chi alpha square, okay, is that value of chi square such that uh, the area under this curve beyond this particular chi alpha square will be equal to alpha. Okay, so and you have chi square table, uh, L means uh, tabulated. in terms of degrees of freedom and levels of significance okay like this okay now it is uh, very easy to see that if you fix the level of significance and you look down the curve you will see that the value of chi square increases as k increases that is point 1 okay point number 1 and uh, you look you separate these out okay and you see uh, the okay you separate this out and and also now look at the other this thing you keep some value of k okay and you you go along the curve along this direction you would see that chi square uh, decreases as alpha increases so here you see that alpha is decreasing from 0.995 it 
it goes down okay but you see that along this table the value of chi square is increasing okay so one one thing is that for a for as k increases chi square is increasing okay however uh, if alpha is less than beta or alpha is great so if alpha is greater than beta then you would have chi of alpha square is less than chi of beta square okay and this property this this uh, relationship between or the, the dependence of chi square on k and on how its variation with alpha is used to estimate the value of the variance of the infinite population given the variance of the finite sample and of course the number of degrees of freedom in the finite sample okay now let's uh, note a few pointers we know that alpha is between 0 and 1 because it is basically a the uh, proportion of a curve proportion of a curve whose complete area is equal to 1 okay so alpha is between 0 and 1 that is for sure okay and we also see that if a is less than b then chi chi a square is greater than chi b square okay and the probability of chi square being between uh, chi a square and chi b square is equal to b minus a okay so now let us take the case of how do you uh, let us uh, derive how we can compute sigma given sigma x square okay and for for this what we need is the uh, is the level of significance so we we want alpha so let us we we want to say what is the value we want to uh, not what we want we have sigma x square and alpha with us okay now what we know is that the value of chi square is between these two ranges chi 1 minus alpha by 2 square or not the value of chi square the value of chi square is between being between these two um, bounds is the difference of the uh, level of significance is here so alpha by 2 and 1 minus alpha by 2 okay so that will become 1 minus alpha okay it can be reproduced at the other end also okay using these two bonds where the bound will become alpha where the where the level of significance would become alpha okay going further we can replace chi square by k sigma x square by sigma square and then we can uh, invert these fractions okay, and change the direction of these inequalities okay so from that we have this relationship now we can multiply the inequality the the parameters in the inequalities by k times sigma x square that is not going to change the probability now okay so what you get is this okay so basically what we are saying is the probability that sigma square is between these two bounds this is equal to alpha okay and 
and once you know the value of alpha and k you can determine you can use the chi square table to determine chi, chi of 1 minus alpha by 2 square and chi square of chi square 1 plus alpha by 2 and chi square 1 minus alpha by 2 okay from the table and we also know that as k increases okay uh, chi square value is increasing however there is a much more nuanced uh, thing that uh, note a uh, thing to note is that k by chi square will be is is, is will be a decreasing function as or k by chi, b, chi beta square is a decreasing function when beta is greater than 0.5 and the same is an increasing function when beta is less than 0.5 okay now we can see that alpha is between 0 and 1 okay which would mean that 1 plus alpha by 2 is always greater than 0.5 and 1 minus alpha by 2 is always less than 0.5 of course alpha equal to 0 is the point is the particular value where both are equal but i don't think that alpha equal to 0 is an inf uh, is an interesting point at all okay. so uh, what's for sure is that these two inequalities are there okay k by chi beta square okay here you have beta is greater than 0.5 here you have beta is less than 0.5 okay now let us say let us see the case where k is increasing so basically first what we have done is that once we have the particular value of uh, alpha and k we are able to determine the upper and lower bounds uh, of the infinite population's variance such that the probability of the of the infinite population uh, having this way having a variance in this range is alpha okay now what we are looking at is that if you increase the value of k what will happen now if you increase the value of k the lower bound is going to okay so this factor is decreasing and this factor is increasing oh, sorry is increasing as k increases now so the upper bound is decreasing and the lower bound is increasing so which would mean that as the infinite uh, the uh, estimate of the infinite population's variance would get tighter and tighter as k increases in simpler words we get a better uh, we get a better or a tighter range for sigma square if more samples are used and that is quite intuitive also this is the way that for alpha being greater than 0.5 what how will k by chi alpha square where is the square is not very visible here and so okay so we have this uh, inequality and we also have the mm, conclusion that the estimate of the infinite population will uh, in infinite population's variance would become tighter as the number of samples are increased on the other hand if alpha is increased that is if you want a better confidence level without changing the number uh, with without changing the number of samples uh, number of samples or the number of degrees of freedom then 
the range of sigma square is going to increase that is you want to be sure you want to put bounds within which sigma square should lie and with a probability equal to this thing so if what you want to say is that probability of alpha less than sigma square less than beta should be equal to something some p okay now as p increases uh, you without if you don't change the number of samples then the upper and lower bound the alpha and beta are going to be largely separated because you have a distribution in which your sigma square can be and if you want more and more part of this uh, curve to be within this range the lower and upper bound of the curve are obviously going to shift away okay now all the above analysis is under the assumption that the data that we're talking about the data set conforms to a gaussian distribution okay and all the analysis tools that we have also are geared toward geared with the assumption that we are dealing with a data set that conforms to the gaussian distribution or that it fits the gaussian distribution but the question is whether a given data set fits into the gaussian distribution at all the simplest and the roughest way is to just plot the histogram and from the shape of the histogram guess if it is a gaussian distribution or not we may be able to guess it or it may be difficult let us look into that a little while later but while doing this guesswork or while analyzing the data you should always be remembered that outliers would exist there may be some uh, a very very few number of uh, samples okay which due to large errors in the measurement or or large blunders in the way the measurement was taken place okay may deviate away or may have significant deviations from the mean to the extent that the number of de the deviation is greater than 3 times the standard deviation okay so and categorizing those data points are outliers typically when you are trying to fit whether when you are trying to determine when the if the distribution or data set follows a gaussian distribution you typically ignore the outliers okay and use the rest of the data set so you compute what is the sample mean and the standard deviation and any data outside this range that the magnitude of the deviation from the sample mean is greater than 3 times the data set's standard deviation you ignore that but those those points okay now let us say using this we have composed the histogram and the histogram looks like this if the data set were a gaussian distribution then you would expect some symmetry okay so from that we can say but you can say that this uh, the uh, graph graph a is not symmetric so this is probably not gaussian and it's more likely that it is not gaussian okay so you can say likely not gaussian so what about the second set is this gaussian or not it looks symmetric but it is not perfectly symmetric okay so thus this conforms to a gaussian distribution okay of course it is not 100% conforming to a gaussian distribution but is it good enough okay to what percentage is it a gaussian distribution 
okay so to what percentage of confidence level can you see that this data this set of data is part of a gaussian distribution okay so we can use the chi square table and perform something called as a chi square test let's look into that okay and moreover what we have here what we have here is we are trying to analyze whether a distribution of data data points conforms to a gaussian distribution or not and until now we had seen two parameters one is the mean and the standard deviation okay now you are seeing different uh data sets being displayed on the screen different set of points and on the right you have the mean and standard deviations of along the x direction along the y direction and also the cross correlation of the points okay. and you can see that these are not changing at all so all these data sets have the same x mean have the same y mean have the same x uh, standard deviation in the x and y direction and have the same correlation so these uh, parameters are insufficient to determine the nature of the data distribution visually we can very easily say that these are completely different data distribution of points on a 2d plane however if we look only at these five parameters or rather only these four parameters we have no clue so something more needs to be seen okay something more of what is the deviation from an expected distribution or for if what is what is, what is the deviation what is the deviation from an expected gaussian distribution that has to be quantified okay and that is what we will try to do okay using the goodness of fit test or the chi square test let's look into the procedure so first whatever data that you have they are put into p equally spaced bins p being determined by the sturgeus rule that we had discussed in the last class the next step is to if required uh, adjust the width of the bins so that at least 3 to 4 points are there in at least 80% of the bins okay so that no range is grossly underrepresented of course this would mean that the number of points that you want to take uh, should also correspond to that no, with with very few number of points obviously you can't even determine whether it is a gaussian distribution or, or not you should start with n being large enough and that goes without saying now the next is to calculate chi square from the data what we had earlier was the theoretical definition of chi square being k sigma x square by uh, sigma square okay however from the data we want to get the chi square for the data Okay. so that we will see from the deviation from the, the from, from the expected number of points in a particular bin that is ni dash if the distribution was gaussian and the actual number of points in that particular bin which is ni okay and these are summed up that is ni minus ni dash whole square by ni dash that is being summed up to get the chi square value and we will compare this value to the chi square table 
and make our uh, conclusion okay and obviously if you are the value of chi square it is going to follow uh, fall between two uh, particular uh, values of chi square in the table chi alpha 1 square and chi alpha 2 square and that would mean that we can say that the given data set is a Gaussian distribution with a level of confidence between alpha 2 and alpha 1. Okay. Let's take an example. Here we have 100 samples okay. and uh, the samples are ranging from 480 to 519. Okay. So, in the number of uh, bins that we have uh, that we need is log 2. Since the number of samples is 100, the number of bins is uh, log 2, log is 200 to the base, uh, to base 2. So that would be 8 approximately and since we don't would not want to have any of the points to be exactly on the bin boundary we are going to change the range from 479.5 to 519.5. So this range is to be divided into 8 bins. Okay. So this entire range is of uh, a width 40 so each bin is going to be of a width 5 okay so i have your first bin here and there are five points on this you have a second bin here with eight third one fourth one fifth one sixth here seventh 8th and we can have a table of all the bins and since we have no other information we are going to use determine the true mean and the uh, standard deviation of the uh, infinite set we are going to assume that the true mean of the infinite set is equal to the sample mean and the uh, standard deviation or the variance of the infinite population is equal to the standard deviation of the sample data set mm -hmm. and uh, from these uh, measurements we can say that the sample mean is 499.53 with a standard deviation of 8.389 Okay. Now, how do you determine whether the expected number of data points in a particular thing? Okay. Note that you have, let us say, you have two bin boundaries or you have a particular bin that goes from ZI minus 1 to ZI. Okay, the Z distribution table gives us the area under the curve before ZI. Okay, so the area between these two curves would obviously be F of ZI minus F of ZI minus 1. But this is scaled down. So, for a total distribution area to be equal to the area of the under the total all the distributions being equal to 1 and so we multiply it by n to get the number of points in that thing. So, by that we can find out that these are the expected number of points. Of course, you will you can never expect these to be whole numbers okay. and from this, we can proceed further and determine the value of chi square. Okay, and these these are just algebraic calculations. So I am not there is no point in elaborating that. 
we finally determine the chi square is 1.96 for this particular data set that we are talking about. Okay, so we had we have determined chi square is 1.96, and we have also assumed that both the uh, sample me both the we have also used the data set to determine the true mean mu and also the um, standard deviation of the infinite population okay which would mean that the number of degrees of freedom is 8 minus 2 the number of bins minus 2 which is equal to 6 okay now for k equal to 6 if you look up the chi square table and try to figure out where does chi square equal 1.96 fit in it fits fits in between these two boundaries so the conclusion that we have now is that we can say that the data set follows a gaussian distribution with an with a confidence level between 90 to 95 percent so at least there is a 90 percent chance that this data is a Gaussian distribution between 90 to 95 percent chance that this data set is a Gaussian distribution if we had uh, more entries in the chi square uh, table then probably we can have a more finer range for our confidence interval okay now coming to the conclusion of this lecture see we have seen that the extent extent of the randomness or the uncertainty in the measurement can be quantified by using the standard deviation and the mean of a particular measurement set and the gaussian distribution captures the characteristic errors or characteristic deviations from the mean that are that can be expected from a truly random distribution okay. and a truly random distribution which definitely have some mean okay. it's not a uniformly distributed uh, data set okay it's not something like the roll of a dice where all possibilities have a uniform uh, chance it's it is, we are talking about there is a true measurement and there are other sources of random errors which cause deviations in the measurement in that case those deviations are captured by a gaussian distribution and we can use a z distribution table to estimate the expected error in the measurement or expected deviation of the sample mean from the true mean that we have seen in the last class and we can use a chi square table to assess whether a given set of measurement conforms to a gaussian distribution or not or how confidence that we uh, do we have with what confidence can we say that the given set can be assumed to be gaussian and the z distribution table can even be applied on it okay however it should always be remembered that all these assessments since we are talking about random variables all these assessment themselves come with associated probabilities and not certainties we are not 100% sure that any that the error is equal to this particular value okay we are not sure that a, any distribution is gaussian or is not Gaussian there is always a chance that we have taken the wrong set of points in a truly random truly Gaussian distribution and we may get a low value of chi square okay or it may also happen that the we may have a case where we have taken again take the wrong thing taken the wrong points which don't really calculate capture the entire distribution 
and we may conclude that something fits a Gaussian distribution to 90 percent. Okay. However, this is 90 is not equal to 100 percent, so we are never talking about certain things. Okay. So these are the chapters that you can see and learn more about um, the Z distribution and the cash square distribution. And with that, we come to the end of this lecture and also the end of the course. Thank you for your patience.